Welcome back to GearWire.com. I'm Bill Holland. I'm here with Suzanne Shani. And we're talking about your whole progression through your career as an electronic comp composer and musician. Tell me a little bit about the early days. What did you start on? Well, in the very early days, I played piano as a child. But then I discovered electronic music uh, one evening at MIT. And they were using a computer, very early uh, you know, computer music. And so then I went to Stanford, where I worked with Max Matthews on a PDB-10, and it was called Music 5. Uh, and that was my beginning, but the real um, revelation came when I met Don Buchla and uh, went to work for him in his factory and eventually got my own Buchla together. And that's what I played for the next, you know, umpteen years. Yeah. So now you've told me, though, you've played on a little bit of everything. What are some of the other synthesizers you've enjoyed versus ones you've kind of not shied away from, I guess? Well, I liked, you know, I was very um, committed to the non-keyboard synthesizers because I really felt that the keyboard was a misguided, you know, interface, an inappropriate interface, as they say. Uh, so when I started to doing more commercial work, I played, you know, I had to play some keyboards. Like I even played the ARP string ensemble. Uh, I played the Kurzweil. I played the CS80. I played the Prophet 5 I loved very much. Um, I played the Synclavier, I played the Moog, I played the Putney, I played, you know. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> and what's interesting too is you come from a classical tra classically trained pianist background, but the way you approach synthesizers is different. You're, you're, you're saying because you have these new instruments that are producing tones in a completely different way, the keyboard really isn't appropriate for that because it's a completely different way of generating tone and generating sound. Is that, how did you apply your classical training to these early synthesizers? Well, it was an evolution really because at first my music was a live performance of the Buchla and it was very abstract and it was based on the uh, multiple arbitrary function generator which was a matrix of sequencers. So it wasn't just a single sequencer that could bore you, it was an intersection of four that you could control. So it was very interesting and spatial. Uh, but then um, I came back to my, my roots in keyboard when I combined piano in my recording The Velocity of Love. So my first two albums were all electronic and then I did this one song that had the piano on top. And that was of course my big hit. And I started this gradual progression towards uh, being more acoustic, combining. And now I'm 100% acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so it's interesting. You went from acoustic to electronic back to acoustic again. Yes, I know. Never say never. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that's why some people say things are obsolete, and it's not always true. You know, there's synthesizers are another part of music that can add and uh, add another dimension to what you're doing. It certainly influenced my compositional style. If you you have an ear for you know the elements of composition, the use of that machine that I was in love with. Um, completely influenced the way I write now, so they're inseparable, really. Well, that's extremely interesting. This has been a great interview, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. And we will be back with more from Fall AES 2007 on GearWire.com.